I'm so proud you drove me up here and I didn't have to come by myself. You're welcome. I'm glad. I got to do it. Really glad. Today, I'm going to see Dr. Proctor. The bariatric surgeon I found through Amanda and my friend Lori is bringing me to the appointment because she has a vehicle that I can get in and out of that's more accommodating for my size. <laughs> I got it. Here, <laughs> Hold on. I got it. You got it? Okay. <laughs> Come help me. Yes, ma'am. I'm walking into Dr. Proctor's office. I'm nervous because what if he tells me I'm not comfortable working on you because you're bigger than anybody I've ever worked on. Hello. Hey. Jessica. Yes, sir. How are you? Hi, I'm Charlie Proctor. Yes, sir. Nice to meet you. You too. You want to talk about weight loss surgery? Yes, sir, I do. Well, good. Well, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, the past two years have been hell. How so? I can't do anything for myself. You know, I can't hold out. I, I can't go with family anywhere. I've had to stop driving. This last nine months, I haven't driven because my legs swell so bad that I'm not comfortable. You know, it's not living. Do you have a lot of medical problems? I, I have high blood pressure, sleep apnea, and the endometrial cancer. So, you know, it's every six months. You're supposed to go back and get that checked on. But the third time I went, he said my weight just wouldn't allow him to get where he needed to get to see what he needed to see. So you're having difficulty now just even with surveillance to see where your cancer is? Right. I've had three pulmonary embolisms, so that terrifies me. I've had high-risk patients here before, but Jessica is one of the younger patients I've seen. She already has endometrial cancer. She understands that at any night, she could just quit breathing and die. So Jessica's stakes are extremely high. You are trapped in a body that's gonna kill you. You know that. Yes, and sir. We have to change this today. Yes, sir. So let's start off by getting on the scale and see where we're starting from. Yes, sir. I don't have a clue what my current weight is. So when I step on the scale, you know, I know I don't want to see a big number, but I know it's going to be a big number. All right, 708 pounds. Go ahead and have a seat. In my mind, when I step on the scale, I didn't really have any hopes on what numbers were because it had been so long since I got on the scale. Um, I'm worried about you. I really am. You are a very, very unhealthy person. And we're starting from a very bad place here. We have to make some major changes before we can ever even think about getting you to the operating room. Yeah. All right? That starts, number one, with weight loss. Jessica, at 31 years old, is on her way to a quick grave. At a height of 5'4", weighing 708 pounds, that puts her at a BMI, a body mass index, of 125 kilograms per meter squared. A BMI of 40 is morbidly obese. A BMI of 121 really doesn't even have a name. I want to see you drop 50 pounds over the next month. You ever done that before? You think you can lose 50 pounds in 30 days? No, I don't. I don't think so. You're going to amaze yourself that if you make a commitment to yourself, to your health, to you living longer, that if you just make these incremental changes in your diet, you're going to see that weight come off. I, I can try. If it's meant to be, it'll be. If little bumps come along the way and it don't happen, then I'm not going to push, you know? It's worrisome when somebody tells me uh, what they can't do right at the start. It tells me they're already somewhat defeated. She's more than capable of losing 50 pounds over the next month and really even more. You know, if she wants to live, she has to completely change her mindset and commit to this. 
This is life or death for you. That's what you have to think about. Every time you want to cheat on your diet, every time you want to eat a little bit later, every time you're going to do something that moves you further away from a potential surgery that's going to save your life, that's what you have to think about. Any I'm, deal? I'm ready. All right. Jessica, it was great to meet you. You too. I'm looking forward to uh, joining you with this journey. Yes, okay? sir. Thank you. All right. I'll see you soon. Yes, sir. Thank you. Fifty pounds sounds like a big number. It's gonna be a lot on my end, but life is hard, so it's hard where I'm at now, so it can't get any harder. I'm just gonna come in here and watch you. All righty. <clears throat> Dr. Proctor gives me a goal to lose 50 pounds in a month before I can have surgery. I'm starting my diet and I hope that I can put it off. Hey guys, me and Miss Danielle was gonna do some food prep for my um, healthy diet. Salad, a good old salad. We're gonna let Miss Jessica taste this and we're gonna prep the rest of it and get you a fork, Miss Jessica. The nutritionist at Dr. Proctor's office told me that I'm gonna have to incorporate more vegetables and protein and to eat every two hours. It's a big adjustment because I'm used to just eating one time a day. But I mean, I'm ready to try anything. I have to at least try before I know it don't work. That's good. Thank you. It's yes, ma'am. Yes, All right. Thank you. Got this. Amanda, how hey. are you doing? Good, how are you? So wonderful to see you. Me too. Oh my goodness. Jessica's told me that she decided to do surgery. So since I'm due for my two year checkup anyway, and it gave me a chance to talk to Dr. Proctor about Jessica. It's amazing. Yeah, so uh, very different from our first meeting uh, two and a half years ago, right? Yes. So I wanted to thank you for um, taking on my friend Jessica. She told me she had an appointment a few days ago. Yes, I, I really enjoyed meeting her. But I worry for her because I sort of feel like she's trying to go this somewhat alone. Yeah. And uh, as you know, that's not a very easy thing to do. Right, and she lives by herself, so it's really just her. But I'm hoping that I can help her since I'm getting my certification. Um, it's a licensed nutritionist and wellness coach. Good for you. Thank you. I decided to become a wellness coach because I wanted to be able to give back. Hey guys, thank you for hopping on for another Motivational Monday. So this week we're gonna talk about food guilt. Jessica is the first person that I'm really working with one-on-one -on -one since I've started this whole process of becoming a certified nutritionist and life wellness coach. So I have a lot riding on this, not only for her, but for me, because I want to see if the skills that I've learned in my life experience can actually help somebody that's in the situation that I was once in. I just really want to be there for Jessica. Well, listen, I think that's going to be great for her. Uh, it's a tremendous asset. As you know, this is a tough journey to go on, and just having that kind of encouragement along the way is going to do her a lot of good. So um, let's weigh in, see how things are going here. I was 715 pounds at my highest weight, and it's been about three years since I have been on my weight loss journey. All right, go ahead, step up. There was a point where I was obsessed with what the number on the scale said, so, for me, I try not and look at the scale as much. 220 pounds. Yeah. It's a big difference from 715 pounds, big isn't it? Big difference, yeah. That's great. I'm really proud of Amanda, not only physically, but such a huge change mentally with her and the things that she's done. I really hope that seeing everything that Amanda's accomplished will be a big inspiration for Jessica. What's next on the horizon? Um, anything I can do to help Jessica, like I'm on board with. Like I told you before, she reminds me so much of me because our stories are so similar. 
My heart just goes out there so much because I know what it's like to be that way. And it just breaks my heart. So if I can use my experience to help someone, then that's what I want to do. You know, you've, you've literally worked your tail off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two and a half years, right? Right. I'm terrified for Jessica right now because I don't think that she has the choice of wasting time. And I hate to say this because it sounds crude, but she basically has one foot in the grave right now. And what she does with her other foot is going to decide whether she steps backward or she falls in. I don't think she realizes how sick she is. And she won't be independent very much, much longer. Right.